But it's good, YouTube. We are back at it again. This is Keith versus Star. And we got another video for y'all today. This is a video that was requested to me. This is Sonny Liston, boxing most intimidating and unwanted champion. But let's just get right to it, man. In a time where boxing was rife with corruption and was ruled by organized crime, no fighter more perfectly represented the sweet science's dark age better than the fearsome Sonny Liston. His soulless glare that lacked emotion and his scowl that could crush a man's will to win. The one they called the Night Train brought an air of menace everywhere he went. And although his name is synonymous with fear, no fighter was more misunderstood and mistreated. Rainy Day Boxing brings you Sonny Liston, a boxing legend. Hey, I think it's called Rainy Day or Rainy Day Boxing. I, they did the same video of the first uh, Rocky uh, Marciano video that I did. Content is crazy. Got, gets millions of views, man. Check them out, y'all. For real. Sonny Liston, I think, was possibly the greatest intimidator of all time. I've seen him stare guys down where they were so scared climbing up the ring steps they could barely get in the ring. Looking at people as though he hated everyone. Looking at writers as though he hated all writers. Sonny Liston, I watched him here in the gym a few months ago, and he can hit a guy in the elbows and just about break his uh. arm. Liston would serve time for armed robbery and later for beating up a cop. He'd been arrested more than 100 times. He was arrested a hundred times? Who, how? See, I don't be knowing nothing about none of these sports. So when I watch these videos, I have no clue of exactly what's going on. But this dude was out here tripping, tripping. A hundred arrests, bro? He found boxing at the right time, time. I'm telling you. His manager was tied to organized crime. And one thing more, Liston could fight like hell. Born Charles L. Liston in Arkansas, USA, on an unknown date, Sonny's beginnings were as humble as can be. He was the 24th of 25 children. Growing up Damn. on a cotton plantation, a lot his of father kids. used him as a substitute for a mule. And when he wasn't mm. being worked by his father, he was being whipped by his father, and he had the scars to prove it. Sonny came up under probably the poorest kind of financial conditions that you could imagine. Developed his tremendous physique working in the cotton fields as barely a teenager. Liston said, we grew up with few clothes, no shoes, little to eat. My father worked me hard and whooped me hard. Yeah. I realized what this guy's life was like, beaten every day by his father and had welts on his back the rest of his life. And the mule dies. And the father who used to beat the crap out of him anyway, constantly, says, you're the mule. And he's the mule trotting the furrows in the field. And, you know, he said, that's I'm not taking this crap anymore. At the young age of 13, Sonny mustered up the courage to leave his abusive father. All alone, okay. he hitched hike to St. Louis to reunite with his mother. St. Louis. But Sonny not having the ability to read or write had almost nothing going for him at his new schools. So he took to the mean streets of St. Louis where his tremendously stocky physique and appearance of a man gained him fear and respect and eventually led him to a life of crime. He said he was in school. They were smaller kids and they would make fun of him because he was so big. He eventually started playing <laughs> hooky and dropping out and not going to class and his formal education didn't get very far. He was at the dark of side. Course of course he did. He was at the time of the real poor section and he saw how the poor people got money. He winds up getting into trouble. He's a big guy, and his size is intimidating. And I think what he discovers when he's a teenager is that his size can be intimidating, and he can maybe use that to his advantage. As a teenager, Liston had racked up charges of larceny and armed robbery and was known to the police as a Nixie fighter, a man not afraid to fight the cops. Eventually, every... Yo, I've never heard that term before, a Nixie fighter? So you can be popping... You can get a name in the streets just for being somebody who will put hands on a cop. That's crazy, bro. That's crazy. Police car in St. Louis had a picture of Liston taped to their sun visors. The man had a target on his back. A serious prison record. Armed robbery, assaults on police officers. Sonny Liston was the most threatening guy around. 
1956, in a brawl with a police officer, the cop wound up with a broken knee, and Sonny managed to run off with the cop's gun and a cap. Then, uh, after his release, <laughs> he wound ran off with a cop gun. Wound up putting him upside down in the trash barrel. After he busted the cop's leg in St. Louis, he was a branded man. The word had gone out, harass this guy. Put the screws to him wherever you get the chance. Sonny Liston, after some minor infractions, went to the big time. He went to rob a gas station, he went to rob a restaurant. After Sonny was tried, he got five years in jail. That was the sentence for armed robbery at the time. And he went to Damn. the penitentiary in Jefferson, which was a really tough place. Time Magazine called it the bloodiest 47 acres in America. Gangs ruled it. There were fights all the time. Guards were afraid to patrol some of the D blocks. But his sentence soon turned into a blessing in disguise, mm, as he was mm, able mm. to thrive in the prison boxing program. Even in the United States' most infamous prison at the time, Liston was the most feared man on the block. Wait, did they say how old he was or did I miss that? How old was this dude when he was doing this? It seems like he was pretty young. This nigga was a prison boxer? That's crazy. To fight him by himself. They had to put two or three in the ring with him to get him any kind of exercise. So I knew he had to be a very strong, powerful man. This guy was a headbreaker. That's how he went to prison. And in prison, he was a headbreaker. He Mafia's head honchos who served the as the mafia, underworld huh? commissioners of boxing. His potential in the boxing world and mob connections helped get him an early parole, and also on the outside, landed Sonny a job as a mafia leg breaker. Frankie Carbo, a former professional killer for Murder Incorporated, now ruled the- This nigga said he was a, a mob leg breaker? They got people in the mob that the mob, where their entire job is to just break niggas' legs? boxing game from the shadows it was now the undercover manager of Sonny Liston as of December 1960 Sonny Liston was controlled by powerful racketeer groups under the leadership of Frank Carbo Mr. Gray the superintendent one of the most feared gunmen of the prohibition era and we undisputed czar mm, mm, mm. of the professional sport have you ever threatened any manager or boxer or promoter for not carrying out any wishes i respectfully decline to answer question on the ground i cannot be <laughs> he said nigga I ain't snitching when he wasn't boxing liston's new boss made sure he was available for other work laborers got out of line sonny was the guy that roughed them up he would collect money for loan sharks and numbers riders and they involved him to enforce their strikes their collection of debts and any other nigga, where are he gonna get the boxing to be done? And they knew this guy could knock out anybody if he hit them. And it was just a question of finding the right front managers. The richest prize in sports is the heavyweight championship, and the mob wanted to get back control of the heavyweight title. Liston was matched up against the most avoided, promising heavyweight prospects and mm, obliterated mm, mm. each one of them. Feared Cleveland Williams held the title as the hardest puncher Ooh. in the division until Liston battered him on two separate occasions. It took Sonny only 69 seconds to finish veteran Wayne Bathia and Shit. knock out seven of his teeth. He knocked out seven of his nigga teeth? That's... God damn, boy. Oh. Liston brought in the beginning of the big heavyweights. Previously, the heavyweight crown was held by men who fought under 200 pounds. At 215, Liston was a behemoth compared to his 190 pound mm. counterparts. He had an 84 inch reach and required custom made gloves to fit his 15 inch sized hands. Thought to have the hardest jab in boxing history, so he fought with an innate aggression and lack of pity to oh his opponent. Oh my god! The Mafia, known to rig a contest results to their liking, needed not worry with any of Liston's fights. They now controlled the most destructive heavyweight since Jack Dempsey. And the top contenders felt the sting of his punches. Ooh. Harris gets hit with a left hook and goes down. A prize fight is like a cowboy God. movie, Liston once gloated. There has to be a good guy and a bad guy. People pay their money to see me lose. Only in my cowboy movie, the bad guy always wins. West Ball. I know, I know that they said that the heavy waist was small, that it was like 190 something. He looks fucking humongous compared to these dudes. I'm not even lying. I like guess not even close how much bigger he is to these dudes. You can just tell when his physique that he's huge, bro. 15-inch hands? Come on, man. 
has never been knocked off his feet until now. I got like a cool Sonny eight, a nine over here. Classic man. punches with either hand like Lewis or later like Tyson. He had enormous punching power and he knocked almost everybody out quick. switches his attack from the body to the head. Oh my god. You can hear the hits. Tremendous left jab and a great hook. Sonny really became a force in boxing. Oh, this guy could really hit. He knocked the stuffing out of the headgear. When he hit you, it came apart. God. Johnson catapults to the canvas. Nobody ever hit me like that guy. Every time he hit you, he broke something. He broke my nose, my left cheekbone, and gave me 72 stitches. A dynamite combination of punches oh by Sergeant. Oh! Murray goes down. So he listen belongs among the five greatest heavyweights of all time. He had a left jab in front of him, which was probably the best Damn. in all heavyweight history. Had the kind of a jab God. that went through you. Them jabs is just connecting crazy. He had a reputation as a fearsome puncher, oh. a potential Shit. rival for heavyweight champion Floyd Patterson. Who do you want to fight in the ring in your next engagement? The man got the title. Mr. Floyd Patterson, currently the heavyweight champion. Despite his underworld allies, Sonny earned a title shot mm. the hard and honest way. He too. Patterson was the darling of mm. wholesome America. Civil rights organizations desired black athletes. Never to be heard model it, dude. Citizens, Floyd Patterson. To positively represent. He looked like a fucking actor. Floyd Patterson was the perfect representation for this cause. Charles Sonny Liston was not. There was a an awful lot of controversy at the time whether this morally reckless person, quote unquote, actually was worthy of fighting for the heavyweight championship of the world. We don't really associate Sonny Liston with the civil rights movement because the civil rights movement didn't associate itself with Sonny Liston. Mm. There was a lot of concern about Liston fighting for the title to represent us. He's not the kind of image that we want. You know, this guy's been in prison. He's illiterate. He's got all these connection with these white gangsters, and we don't want that. Everybody knows that the best heavyweight in the world at this time was Charles Sonny Liston. There was no number two. Every so they basically was like, fuck dude, man. He out here committing crimes. He messing with the mob. We is not giving him no title fight. Which I can understand that because you want to keep the, you want to keep the, you know, you want to keep organized crime out of your, you know what I mean? Your boxer organization. But at the same time, it's like, does he, is he good enough to deserve the shot? That's what really should matter. Everybody knew it. The question was, was he going to be permitted to fight for a title? Well, I've fought all the top contenders and I've fought my way up to the number one spot. So what do a man have to do to get an honest shot at the title? The champion, Floyd Patterson, was a popular figure. Mm -hmm. His manager refused to let him fight Liston yeah. because of his connections to the mob. Floyd Patterson was sold as kind of mm. the meek, safe, polite Negro. In contrast to Sonny Liston, as a menace to civilization, a threat to the cleanliness of sports. Floyd Patterson was invited to the White House by Jack Kennedy. Jack Kennedy urged Patterson to fight Liston and to beat him. Then, in 1962, over the strong objections of his mentor, Cus D'Amato, Patterson signed to defend his title against Charles of Sonny Liston. Cassius, in about a month from now, Sonny Liston is going to be trying to get the championship from Floyd Patterson. How do you see this fight? Trying to get. Sonny Liston will get it. When this Liston Floyd Patterson dude, was he, was he good? Boom. Like, I, I, I don't know him. I don't know of him. If y'all know if he was good, man, put it down in the comments, man. You know how it go. I read all the comments, especially if it's something constructive, just so I can, you know, stay up to date on stuff, learn whatever I can, you know what I mean? Muhammad Ali must Floyd have been a shorty then, or was this when he was not careful. able to box? What? You knew, at what point in time was this in his career? Last very long. Sonny Liston moves out to face the big chance of his 28 years of a turbulent life. Mm. Mm. Oh, okay. Liston gets to him against the ropes with lefts and right. Ties him up. Won't let him get away. Liston with a left. Damn. A left hook and oh, shit. Sonny Liston destroyed Floyd Patterson at two minutes and six seconds of the first round. It was a slaughter. And Sonny Liston wins the heavyweight championship of the world. 
the stadium was eerily quiet, almost funereal. In two minutes? In the oversimplified world of boxing, evil has just defeated good. The public would uh, let bygones be bygones, that I would be a good champion. Maybe a better champ than he was, either just as good a champ as he was. Against all odds, Sonny achieved what he set out to do. And all he wanted now was a second chance to live a respectable life and not be seen as a criminal. But nothing changed. Mm. The morning after the fight, Sonny flies back to Philadelphia. He believes he has wiped the slate clean, preparing a speech where he's promising to be a good champion. And he just assumes that the mayor is going to be there and there's going to be a big parade. He at least thought he would come home to a hero's welcome. And the plane landed in Philadelphia, and he was hoping to see hundreds or maybe even thousands of people on the tarmac. You know, welcome home, champ. The usual thing that you see happening with championship yeah. fighters coming home. And there was nobody. You know, this guy who was waiting for his great moment in life saw that nothing had happened. No one had come to grief. Nobody came? Y'all really hated this dude. That's crazy. Nobody came? Man, just imagine that. Just imagine you go somewhere where it's supposed to be people there to see you and you on a you on your high horse. You like, man, nigga, I did it. I am the man. And nobody shows up. That's heartbreaking, bro. And his shoulders just slumped. The feeling of hope, of acceptance into the greater world vanished in an instant. A lot of people feel that that really crushed him emotionally and that he never I really understand from that disappointment or really the realization that it didn't make any difference what Sonny Liston did the rest of his life. He was mm, always mm, going to be mm. branded as a bad guy. Sonny's desires to be a good person was crushed along with his dream to be accepted by the public. To the world, he was just an uneducated <sighs> Southern Negro and that intimidated them. The press labeled him as a jungle beast, a jungle a latter-day caveman. It was then that Liston embraced the role of a villain. Sonny was uncomfortable dealing with the press, so he'd usually answer a question with one word or an angry stare. The Sonny Liston stare it became known as. Who asked the question? Are you over there? If he didn't like the question, he would just sit there and look at you, uh, or he would tell you it's a stupid question and not answer it. He was also very intimidating. He was suspicious <laughs> of everyone. He didn't like reporters. Who do you expect your next real fight to be? Rightfully so, man. Y'all treated one? this dude After terrible. watching you spa today, it seems that you plan a vastly increased use of your right hand. Is this true? I'm planning on using both of them. <clears throat> both of them. Right. Newspapers painted him as a bad fella, but for people that are around him and people he knew and liked, he was a good fella. He'd do anything for you. The problem was his name began to appear on the front pages of the newspaper more than in the sports sections of the newspaper. The Denver police harassed Sonny Liston, and I thought treated him very bad. If he would step one foot onto the golf course where he ran, I was with him. They were there to give him a ticket on it. Went in one of these drive through hamburger joints and came out the entrance instead of the exit. Suddenly, there's two police cars there. Even after he became champion, the police, they what? went right on harassing him. Petty things. Picking him up for standing on a street corner talking to someone. For Sonny, the last straw is when they picked him up in the park for driving too slowly. Listen. He said they picked him up. They picked him up for driving too slow, bro. They picked him up for walking through parks. All tight. This is just crazy who was now the champion, if anything, was more disliked now. And I think Patterson, who was deeply beloved, if anything, was now held as the last beacon of hope. A year after winning the title, Patterson mistakenly asked Liston for a rematch. Sonny obliged him. Liston was at the height of his powers, and his aura of invincibility was more imposing than mm, ever. Mm, mm. Why you want a rematch? You lost two minutes into the first round, bro. He'll be my next opponent. What I'm gonna do to him in the, the next fight? What happened in the first one? <laughs> I feel you. Less than a minute gone, and there's the first count. Those are those heavy lefts going through on the right, following up, and this is what's doing the damage. He's tried to fight back Patterson, but the other man has got by far the heavier punch. Beat his ass.
fight lasted two minutes and ten seconds, reconfirming Liston as the heavyweight champion of the world. Despite the win, Liston was again denied the public acceptance he so badly wanted. The public is not with me now, but they have to swing along until somebody else come along to beat me. Mm, I know that's right, son. But there to interrupt the celebrations was the future of boxing. The loud and promising youngster, Cassius Clay, stormed into the ring and proclaimed that he was the man to beat Liston. And over the coming months, Clay would take pestering to an entirely new level. The bomb is too big, he's too flat-footed, and he's too slow. He had gone to his home and banged on his door in the middle of the night in order to aggravate him. He thought of all these high school stunts that he pulled on him, which were demeaning, <laughs> insulting. <laughs> Hey, 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 Muhammad Ali was a fucking troll. That's crazy, bro. Who would have knew that Muhammad Ali was a troll? I would have never thought that. I know he had the rhymes and he was doing this thing, but I had no idea Muhammad Ali was out here trolling niggas. That's hilarious. Demon, chomp, chomp, I'm going to get you. And he's screaming for everybody to hear. Liston finally looks up in that baleful stare of his, pulls out a gun and bang, 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 bang. And Clay runs out as fast as he ever could. It was <laughs> And Liston roared for an hour. Don't you have any respect for him at all as a fighter? As a fighter? I think he should be locked up uh, impersonating a fighter. Mm. Liston said, why not? He said, I'm going to kill him. It's going to take me a round and a half. Sonny Liston took the fight because he thought he could destroy Cassius Clay. Well, do you think it'll end in two? Well, you can bet your life it ain't going four. From the outset, it's obvious that Liston is underestimated Clay's ability. Then he started to take Sonny apart. Pop, 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 pop. Here was a finely tuned, magnificent young athlete in front of him. Sonny suddenly realized, wow, this is something I've never been up against. Ooh. Ooh. God damn. I don't want to say it, so I'm not going to say it, but you know what I want to say. If you've been watching these boxing videos, you know what I want to say. Can't fuck with him. It's not even close. Let's stop it, bro. Look at the, Come on, man. Another jarring right hand that time, folks. Another one. Oh. Sonny Robo. Sonny Robo. Yeah, Sonny. Sonny, hit him back, Sonny. When Liston lopped his butt down on the stool at the end of the sixth round, he said, that's it. They might be stopping it. That might be all, ladies and gentlemen. Something has happened in Liston's corner. They're not going on. And Claire's won. Sonny, everybody know that scene. Great. You know that scene from Muhammad Ali when he doing that. I'm a, I'm gonna put that clip in here. Great pride in being the baddest man in the world no longer was, and there, at his lowest moment, was the press, as merciless mm, as mm, ever, mm. descended upon Liston while he was down. Reporters came at him hard like a group of vultures. The press were saying Sonny was a dog. Sonny was a mm. quitter. It only added to his bad reputation, not as an individual, but as a fighter. Just quit at the end of the sixth round, claiming a shoulder injury, which nobody believed. When I went back to my corner, the whole glove felt like it was full of water. And he was deeply ashamed. This was the thing that gave Sonny his identity. He was the toughest guy in the world. Mm. And suddenly he woke up one morning and he wasn't the toughest guy in the world. So he decided to do something about it. The night of the infamous Phantom Punch, and perhaps the most controversial moment in boxing history, Liston was floored by what seemed to be a harmless punch. Man. Throughout his career, Sonny had been able to walk through some of the hardest puncher's best shots, but now had been sent to the canvas from a shot where the connection could only be seen in slow motion. Oh. From his obvious unwillingness to rise to his feet and his mob connections, rumors of a fix or a die spread like wildfire. This would be Liston's last fight with a So champion. you you telling me that it had to be a fixed fight? Ain't no way that Muhammad Ali could have just... Did y'all see that shot? They, see? Why is it that when I'm watching this video about the dude that I was watching the other videos about, you ain't hear about none of this. But then I see somebody in the comments talking about there was a lot of white supremacy going on in those times where there was a couple fights where he clearly lost that they didn't give him the L's for. But we ain't going to talk about that. Line. 
Any chance that Sonny had it for another shot of the title was lost in 1969 after he was knocked out by the sparring partner, Leotis Martin. Damn. Ah, Sonny. Sonny went out bad. Sonny went out bad. The fact is it will be harder than ever, Sonny, to go all the way up the trail after this defeat. Yes, it would. But I have to tank it over here. Sonny had one last bout against Chuck Wepner, where he made only $13,000, 10000 to repay a loan, and the remaining amount paid to his corner men. By this time, Sonny had relocated to Vegas, a mob-run town that wouldn't look down upon him. Almost none of his career earnings left, Liston found his way back to his old life as mafia debt collector. He was also seen associating with more and more criminal figures who Sonny would eventually fall out of favor with. There were all kinds of allegations as to what Sonny was doing. There were those that say he was pushing heroin, doing the same kind of things, associating with the same kind of people he always had. Damn, Sonny? He wanted to have anything to do with Sonny at that point. He was scared about how far off the edge he was going. Friends of his were told Sonny's hanging out with the wrong folks. There's a drug deal going down and Sonny's involved in it. He was an accident waiting to happen. Sonny Liston was found dead today in his home in Las Vegas, Nevada. What? He died? What? Please don't tell me y'all finna sit here and say that somebody murdered Sonny Liston, bro. Don't tell me that, man. Come on, bro. On January 5th, 1971. After leaving her husband alone in the house over the Christmas holidays, Geraldine Liston returned to find Sonny slumped over, heavily bloated, and in an advanced state of decomposition. With heroin in his system, it was ruled uh, that Sonny died of natural overdose? causes. But Liston's fear of needles questioned that ruling and left theories of foul play. So many people wanted Sonny dead. The only question is who got to him first? Damn. He had gotten involved muscling in on somebody's loan sharking business and that he was murdered over this dispute. Most people in Las Vegas think he was given what they call a hot shot by some element of the mob. But was it self-inflicted or was it administered by someone else? Some people saying that he was getting too big for his britches. He was trying to muscle Damn. in some of the underground characters he was working for. And they decided that this was the way to dispose of Sonny. His forceful presence as Liston was inside the ring. He remained a mystery outside of it, even in death. The exact date of his birth is unknown, and fittingly, we are unsure the day he died. The mysteries and conspiracies that surround his death will never be solved now, but a natural death just seems an unlikely ending to the Liston story. He was a tragic figure who lived a tragic life, but his story wasn't without triumph. His beginnings were as low and muddy as can be, Yet, he rose to the peak of society and soared like a shooting star. All he desired yeah. to do was live a normal, peaceful life, but he was unfortunately never able to do so. Sadly, being misunderstood by the world is what pushed Liston into a life he didn't want to live. For such a powerful man, he had very little power over his own life. Throughout his career, he was given identities that he desperately tried to shake off. He was an illiterate, an ex-con, a leg breaker, and without a doubt, the most intimidating heavyweight champion of all time. I don't think the general public ever knew the real Sonny Liston. They knew the persona, mm, mm, the thug-like mm. guy. He wasn't really that, that was a front. That was like what he needed to protect himself. Deep he, inside, he, he learned to survive, bro. And sensitive and wounded and that rejection, that denial of a second chance to prove himself hurt him mm, the rest mm, of his mm. life. Sonny was one of the most charming people I've ever known in sports, but he didn't share it with people because he had been burnt so often. He was very cuddly and affectionate. I never saw that side of Sonny that's been described as so menacing. He just wasn't like I that. Know, he was right? a fun-loving person. God he was damn. spectacular with little children and old people because they were non-threatening. <laughs> and he was like a father figure to me. Little things he wanted to impart with me about behaving. For me, he really wanted to make certain I stayed out of trouble. He's a good man and he's a kind man and worthy of a chance to contribute to society. 
Do you have any he let that man pass the fine his whole yeah. life. I didn't like to work with the uh, kids in the group setup and everything. I need help, though. Yes, it do. All right, y'all. So that was Sonny Liston, boxing most intimidated and unwanted champion. That was a tragic, tragic story of a man who just shot to the top of the game and then fell off and it ended so bad for him man i that was a crazy video i i i didn't know about sunny listens black backstory and everything that he went through man that, that was a tough video to watch i'm not even gonna lie man but let me know what y'all think down in the comments man did you know about sunny listens life did you know about the the crime and how he just died at a young age man of a drug overdose that's crazy man let me know what y'all think down in the comments. It's been Keep versus Star, and we out. Peace.